This is Twit. WordPress, once again, uh, is uh, in the crosshairs, and it's not surprising. Uh, there are just a constant barrage of problems with their plugins, and WordPress is is so highly used on the internet that the vulnerabilities matter there. A site named, and a service named Plugin Vulnerabilities, I don't think that was wisely named. My, if I were to tell my trademark guy that I want to call a site Plugin Vulnerabilities, he would say, no, that's, <laughs> that's a bad idea. You probably can't actually trademark that because uh, it's just not unique enough. Anyway, they explain, or they explain themselves as, quote, a service to protect your site against vulnerabilities in WordPress plugins. And as we'll see, not only will that keep them busy, but what's happened is we've seen sort of a, a sub-industry get created from, from third-party services that are all jumping in to, to perform that function. They're, the, this plugin vulnerabilities site and service most recent posting from last week is titled Five Plus Million Installed WordPress Plugin Elementor Contains Authenticated Remote Code Execution, parens RCE, Vulnerability. <clears throat> they wrote, late last week, third-party data we monitor showed what was possibly a hacker probing for usage of a WordPress plugin named Elementor, which has more than 5 million active installs, according to WordPress. Um, and this, this hacker was probing for the file slash WP hyphen content slash plugins hyphen Elementor hyphen readme.txt. So that makes sense. If that directory were world readable and I guess it sounds like it is. If they thought that they were going to get it, that would that would allow somebody to pull the contents of readme.txt. If they were able to do that, that would tell them that that site was had the Elementor plugin installed, and then they would do whatever it was they were going to do. <clears throat> the guys uh, at Plugin Vulnerability said we couldn't find any recent disclosed vulnerabilities that should explain that. So we started doing our standard checks we do in a situation where a hacker may be exploiting an unfixed vulnerability in a plugin. What we immediately found was that the plugin isn't handling basic security correctly. Shock, I know. They said he said as we found many functionalities where capabilities checks were missing where they shouldn't be. While some of those were not accessible to users that shouldn't have access, we found at least one that is, and the functionality accessible leads to one of the most serious types of vulnerabilities, remote code execution. That means that malicious code provided by the attacker can be run by the website. They wrote, in this instance, it is possible that the vulnerability might be exploitable by someone not logged into WordPress, but it can easily be exploited by anyone logged into WordPress who has access to the WordPress admin dashboard. Unless another plugin restricts access to the admin dashboard, that would mean anyone logged into WordPress would have access. The vulnerability was introduced in the plugin in version 3.6.0, which was released on March 22nd. So that's interesting. That about a little over a month ago, or rather, uh, not, yeah, just about exactly a month ago. And they said, according to WordPress's latest stats, 30.3% of users of the Elementor plugin are now on version 3.6. something. So that's it. There's an interesting stat all by itself. So that says that a month after a the 3.6.0 was published, one month later, only 30.3% of users of that plugin 
we're using 3.6 point something, meaning that, first of all, 70% that had not upgraded, had, had avoided vulnerability as a consequence of that. But unfortunately, in this case, because the vulnerability was introduced with 3.6.0 and we don't know when it was removed, then actually we'll, we're going to find out in a minute. But, at, you know, 30 percent of users were vulnerable. And apparently some bad guy perhaps knew that and was poking around the Internet trying to find victims. Anyway, they conclude based on what we what we saw in our very limited checking, we would recommend not using this plugin until it has had a thorough security review, meaning that overall they were not impressed with the with the design of the plugin that they found. They said and all issues are addressed. That it has 5 plus million installs and hasn't been properly secured should be very concerning, they wrote. It certainly isn't for a lack of money at the developer, as they raised $15 million in 2020. It also, it also isn't for a lack of reason to be concerned, as two years ago, it was claimed a zero-day vulnerability in the paid version of the plugin was being exploited. So, their English is a little spotty, but, you know, they appear to be a legitimate security f f uh, concern. Although, having said that, as I dug deeper, m more deeply into this, uh, I became a little, I, uh, I guess their, their uh, background became a little more questionable. Um, they posted snippets of code which demonstrated and detailed the vulnerability. And apparently this disclosure, or their disclosure, was made deliberately and irresponsibly over a dispute with the WordPress plugin forum moderators. It seems that these plugin vulnerabilities guys have long been unhappy with the way WordPress manages the reporting of security vulnerabilities. And reading between the lines, it sounds as though WordPress downplays, in their, in their opinion, WordPress downplays vulnerability reports, which annoys these guys. And it sounds like there's been a sort of a back and forth uh, clash of egos. A different firm known as Patch Stack in the same business as, as the plugin vulnerability guys. That is another one of these companies in the add-on WordPress, we're going to try to keep you safe business wrote, they said, the widely popular WordPress website builder plugin Elementor, which has over 5 million active installations, has recently released version 3.6.3, .3, which contains an important security fix. So that tells us that 0 0.0, 0 0.1, and 0.2 were not fixed. 0.3 was. They said this vulnerability allows an authenticated user, regardless of their authorization, to upload arbitrary files to the site. The arbitrary file upload vulnerability could allow someone to take over the entire site or perform remote code execution. Please update immediately! Exclamation um, point. Then they added that patch stack. Pro and business users, and this is you know them promoting their service. Patch Stack Pro and business users have re have received a virtual patch to be to be protected from this vulnerability. And the previous group, you know the 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 plugin vulnerabilities guys uh, who have their bruised egos, also produce what they call a WordPress firewall to autonomously protect their subscribers from this danger when it's been configured to do so, in this case, to limit the types of files which can be uploaded because it's by allowing you to upload something that you're then able to execute that. The, the attacker is able to cause it to get executed, thus running their code on your site. So WordPress's undeniable vulnerability, I mean, undeniable <laughs> popularity, excuse me, their undeniable popularity, coupled with the constant stream of problems, mostly created by insecure and poorly written WordPress plugins, has, as I said, spawned an industry of add-on WordPress protectors. 
In the past, we've often referred to the firm WordFence, where a lot of these uh, vulnerabilities were found and reported, always responsibly. Those are good guys. And their business is protecting the sites that 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 are their subscribers until the add-in has been patched. So they're as proactive as they can be. And of course, we just talked about plugin vulnerabilities and patch stack. There are many others. I saw a list of about 30 recently. Um, and although it was obviously self-serving, recall that it was patch stack who, and we cited them a month ago, uh, released a research white paper observing that last year saw a 150% increase in reported WordPress vulnerabilities compared to the previous year, 2020, with the alarming news that 29% of the critical flaws in WordPress never received a security update. You know, they've, they've, there are plugins that have their developers have, have wandered away from, yet later a critical flaw is found and it never gets fixed. They also observed, comfortingly, that only 0.58%, so what, about 1 in 200 problems, were found in the WordPress core, with the rest being in themes and plugins written by anyone else and typically offered without review. They also noted that almost all of the problems, 91 0.38% of the flaws were found in free plugins, whereas paid slash premium WordPress add-ons only accounted for 8.62% of the total. So the, the takeaway, walkaway advice is stick with the most bare bones WordPress installation possible because the WordPress core is solid. If you want more, take your time, look around, find the most reputable source of WordPress add-ons that you can, which probably means you have to pay for it. But you're paying for some security that's probably worthwhile. And, and in making this trade-off, accept it as always, there will be a trade-off between security and ease of use. You just need to decide where you want your site to sit along that trade-off.